beautiful beings and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I am honored to have another interview partner. Today it's the beautiful and lovely Louisa Havers. Louisa, thank you so much for being here and taking time for me and the community for this conversation today. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited about our conversation. Me too, me too. And as, just as a quick overview, we are going to dive into the topic of aligned success and building the the business of your dreams that's really in alignment with your purpose, with your soul energy and being successful while doing it. And why we are talking about this is because you have successfully done this for yourself. <laughs> so would you just be so kind and tell the audience a little bit about yourself, your journey and what you feel like is worth mentioning in this context and what you're doing today? Yes, absolutely. So well, now I help entrepreneurs and coaches to have aligned success, to break through the upper limits in life. And I do that through helping them to master energetics, mm -hmm. to tap into the Akashic Records so that they can have that soul level of fulfillment whilst they're creating their lives and their reality on on, on Earth. Um, my background is very different, <laughs> very, very different. I used to be a senior manager for social services for about 13 years. Um, and this was predominantly when my children were young. I've got grown up kids now, kids. I mean, they're men, <laughs> they're 24 and, and 21 now. Um, but when they were younger, I was working um, in, in, I you know graduated in psychology and I thought I was going to go off and be like a clinical psychologist or a counsellor. Mm -hmm. And then my eldest son came along. And so I found myself doing something completely different and ending up in the the, the care sector and then ultimately in social services. And, and it was an amazing training ground I'd say for um, the work that I do now not only from the aspect of helping um, developing services for people who've experienced trauma um, I used to lead on developing services um, for community safety programs um, so domestic abuse sexual abuse preventing radicalization drug and alcohol all the things that can really um, have a huge impact on, on people's lives and so I do understand trauma well from a service development perspective but also from you know speaking with the clients and um, helping to really understand what their needs were so that we could get the services right and and then from the business side of things developing those businesses so that they were profitable and um, met the, the the client's needs and so I got a really good insight into what it takes to build a successful business to be able to understand the key foundations for business success because I built help people build lots of different types of businesses um, across different sectors and working with different organizations you know across police and the fire service and the NHS and which is our health service in the in the UK and and whilst I loved it what started to happen was my empathic side of me I, my soul was basically going let's get her feeling this stuff <laughs> and so I started to really feel what energetically what I was feeling um in the in in the business meetings that I was was in I would start to actually feel the the, the content that was being shared and I was like what what is going on and so that led me down the path you know I already had the background in psychology to start to explore what was going on energetically and really then, um, you know, when you have that experience, you start to look back in your life and start to connect the dots. Yes. yes. And, that, and I was like, oh, this is why I feel different to everybody else. This is why I can't watch horror movies mm -hmm. because it will stay with me forever. And so I started to explore energetics and started training in um, chronic healing. And that just opened up the whole world for me and realizing I'm not meant to be working for social services I need to be doing something that's really fulfilling my soul mm -hmm. and so that's kind of one of the the the, the you know if you these turning points in life where you start to recognize that was a, a key po a point for me where I was like I'm not meant to be here anymore and then the the, the second part for me that really gave me that wake-up call was um, I actually had a period of ill health after a very stressful time in in work and I got um, shingles and post 
post-viral fatigue, which meant that I was, you know, wiped out for, for, for months, actually, needing to sleep. And it wasn't lost on me that that was the, the illness that had triggered my dad, dad's period of ill health before he, before he passed away. Mm-hmm. And I'd seen him do what I was doing which was basically being on that corporate hamster wheel, not really having time for life and everything being about being busy and and working. And this illusion of what success was, which, you know, we talk about aligned success, but success in the corporate world can be, the illusions are being busy. (laughs) The illusions are actually, the risk of burnout is is huge for people that are kind of follow it, following that illusion. So I realized I was going down that path and um, didn't take action quick enough. So the universe <laughs> gifted me shingles so that, yeah, <laughs> that I would go, hang on a second, I really need to wake up. This is what my dad had. Hmm, what am I doing here? Um, and so that was when I started to go, right, I'm just creating my exit plan to to, to get me out of the this this corporate world so that I can actually have more fulfillment in life in all the areas of my life not just the wearing the busy wearing the mask of success because it wasn't true success I'd say it was a mask of success that I had in in social services not not aligned success yeah I was a bit of a whirlwind whirlwind run through of, of my journey to 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 you know the exit of social services and to setting up my business here but I feel like it touched a lot of very crucial points already. Like, first of all, I think it's beautiful to see that you were in a serving position before, like you were in this serving attitude and wanting to be of positive impact and influence already, but it was just not quite the right setting that it was also like filling you up and like is not based on self-sacrifice. So, so it was a route and, and it, it was in the right direction, but it was not quite the right hows and whens and whys and how you could set it up in a more aligned way. And another thing that I just found beautiful um, is also to see through what you just ex- um, explained to us that there is no really messing it up or doing it the wrong way because it can always be such a beautiful stepping stone or something that's preparing you or some something that needs to experience in that way before and then afterwards you can build upon it in a more aligned way um, using all the wisdom and information you gain through that experience and as you said as well you will always be course directed by your higher guidance so that is so beautiful to see even for people who may be saying like yeah okay it's easy for them to say that because or whatever the story might be um to really feel like it's never too late mm. and and your soul will never give up on you and the calling will still be there and calling you forth and calling you forth if you're willing to listen. So true. I love I love what you said there about your soul will never give up on you. Yeah. It's it's so true and the the nudges will just get louder and louder. <laughs> Until, until you listen like she's not listening let's give her some shingles like that that will sort her out. Um and it is that we know we were talking about looking back and seeing the breadcrumb trails when it's like, oh, I do remember having that feeling. Oh, did I pay attention <laughs> or, or did I ignore it? Um, and then being able to see the breadcrumb trail to where you've got to today is like, oh, yeah, I've been guided all along. Yeah. Sometimes it's just taken me a little bit longer to pay attention. Right. Right. <laughs> which is why one of the things I love to help people with is helping them to really awaken that connection with their higher self so that they can listen and have confidence with the guidance that's coming through. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes it might not make sense. Yeah. And you need to have that courage and faith, don't you, to, yes. to take action. And sometimes they're going to be small steps to take, but sometimes they might be bigger ones. And you're like, yeah. I've got this real nudge to move country (laughs) whatever it might be like why is this coming through it's making no sense whatsoever but then the whole world opens up when you have courage and take action on that Mm -hmm. so what did you then do to combine energy work and building a business that works for you and where you like now maybe you want to also go into what you're doing now like how exactly you're helping people now and also like the energetics that took you there um, and that it needs to have a 
yeah, just a strong foundation for a business that is not just the recycling of the last time and the same, um, how do you call it? Like repetition of, of yeah. something that's not working, but like, how did you really upgrade it to something that is working and is really in alignment with you and your um, blueprint personally? Yes. Oh, such a good question. Well, I did replicate the mistakes <laughs> in, in the beginning. I swapped the corporate hamster wheel for the entrepreneur hamster wheel, if that makes sense. And it was through recognizing that I was like, oh, hang on a second. I've literally just changed the environment and I'm just recreating, re recreating the, the, the problems. Um, because, of course, I'm the, the common denominator here. Yes. Um, and so what I recognized was through my training with the energetics was recognizing where for me, where people were, I, I've, I have personally found, which is why I feel that the focus I have with the way I coach now, because I coach people in our, in the Helix Method modality, which um, evolved through all my training, all my mm -hmm. experience being deaf guidance being downloaded from the Akashic records as to how to help people have the results that they they wanted and it, this is the way I do my manifesting and my energetics works was I, I found that when I was recreating the hamster wheel I was focusing on the energy that I was in was that there was something wrong and I needed to fix and I find that that can be an approach for a lot of people in the development world where the kind of focus is on the cleansing and the releasing and letting go and 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 but coming from an energy of there's something wrong because of course then what does that create that just creates more of the that if that makes sense whereas the massive shift for me was when I was like hmm actually the guidance is your divine being there's nothing wrong with you this is just programming so let's have a balance of cleansing letting go and transmuting the energy and mm -hmm. with the focus being on who am I stepping into? What is the what is my future self bringing in the consciousness of my future self now? So for me, the focus is very much more forward, mm -hmm. forward focused rather than looking back. If that makes sense, it does. And it for does. me, that was a massive sh shift of actually recognizing that my whole identity needs to change yeah. um, to be able to manifest and create the reality that I wanted to create. That I kept saying that I wanted to create, except yes. I was creating something different and it was because my identity was wrapped up in the old in the old world mm -hmm. my identity around my self-concepts around what success meant you know consciously I could say oh aligned success is x y and z but my body wasn't feeling it yes. <laughs> and so because uh, you know as you know I love using muscle testing to find out what's going on in the uh, in in the in the subconscious and to be able to really stop ourselves telling stories mm -hmm. that we think are okay and uh, really recreate the illusions that keep us where we're at. Whereas when we use muscle testing, you can kind of find out what your subconscious is really thinking mm -hmm. <laughs> to be able to then, okay, so actually my body thinks this, this is the identity that I'm, I'm, I'm creating from. And so then when we can go, right, I'm actually choosing to create a different identity. I'm choosing to imprint mm -hmm. different beliefs that are going to serve me that my future self has already, you know, embodied. I'm choosing to hold different emotions. And this isn't about suppressing stuff that, you know, if there's trauma held in the body or frustrations, this is around processing and moving through those emotions and then going, right, I'm choosing to change my default set point mm -hmm. so that I can create from that different level of consciousness. And then the world just started opening up and my mm -hmm. results went through the roof. My clients' results went through the roof and I was like, this is the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so it would, I'd say it came down to transforming my identity. That was the key thing for me um, and being able to really understand how we create from our identity and the different levels of consciousness so that we can really allow ourselves to change our frequency and to, to create more with ease. And so I, I blend the energetics with the structure and the business processes. Mm -hmm. um, and I know my clients really value that because a lot of people come into this world, you know, being an entrepreneur, you're a fantastic practitioner, but you haven't necessarily already had the business expertise that I've had <laughs> and I've got the grounding that I know a lot of my colleagues who are very energetic really value 
value mm-hmm. that that, that the, the grounding that I that I have so that you can kind of I, I've got you while you learn these skills yes. um you know bringing in your mastery around the energetics and the, the gifts that you have as a as a coach for example or however you're showing up and serve, serving in the world and then I can bring bring the wisdom of the right these are good things to have this is gonna you know these structures are gonna and enable your root chakra to feel safe as you're yes. going out there yes. <laughs> building the building the business because otherwise people can feel like they're kind of throwing spaghetti at the wall trying to kind of figure it out <laughs> you know it's like why isn't this working you know you might see someone else doing something and they're implementing a marketing strategy but their business is in a different point yes. so it's working for them but it wouldn't work for you and also it's not in alignment with your blueprint because you actually yeah. feel really icky inside doing it and so that's not going to create the success that you want. So I think, you know, being able to have a, a successful an aligned, successful business is really identifying, like, what are the values that are true to you? Yes. Um, what feel good in your body? Like, are you the kind of person that loves showing up and doing Facebook lives and chatting? Or does that fill you with horror? And actually, you'd rather write a book. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? There's yes. multi- many different ways to build a successful business. And so I think it's finding out what's true to you and then being able to get some of the core foundational principles in place. It, you scale a business that is profitable rather scaling a business that's got problems because then the problems just get bigger as you scale. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, yeah, it does. And and they were already like, okay, I needed to remember like three things that I wanted to come <laughs> back to. So I'll just take the one you said last right now because it's a beautiful bridge I think that's important what you just mentioned like it's about staying true to oneself but what I would like to add is also being open to explore if there's something you always thought it is not not yours or you're not good at and even like facing the uh (laughs) the first horror that comes up and then realizing is it really something that's nothing for me or is it just something that was like really um, clouded by old experiences and trauma because for example for me I was terrified I was terrified of being live or being on a camera and being seen it was like the camera was going on and every inch Mm -hmm. of shame I had um, built up through my experiences just came on and I was like frozen in a sense but then I started and I was like okay this will never be something I enjoy and I started working through it and I just started using it, using it in ways as well, like connecting with beautiful people, connecting with just for the experience of connection and really serving and focusing on that aspect. And now it's something that I really enjoy. I mean, of course, sometimes stuff comes up, but I realized, hey, my my, it gives me energy. It, it yes. like lightens me up and it's like, yes, I want to do that again. <laughs> and then, of course, people give me feedback around it. And I feel like, wow, if I've never tried it, if I just initially said, no, I'm, I'm I'm scared of it, so I'll never do it, I wouldn't have even experienced this side of me and experienced this possibility and everything that comes with it. So, so yes. So true. Yeah. So true. Exactly. Yeah. And really being open to experimenting, but then just being true to yourself, but not yeah. like um, fooling oneself, just of, <laughs> no, I don't want, like, I don't want to go out there. So just really... Getting in an attitude of ease and and playfulness while trying things out, just as children, yeah. you don't have to be perfect with something, but you can really get into a feeling of, okay, do I enjoy it or not? Exactly. Just as a primer, because it can be the resistance can bubble up, in, and you think, oh, it's not in alignment with my my energy, but actually, it's the fear bubbling up of the results and the success that you're going to have. So it's like, I know, I'm going to make her terrified of of um you know doing a Facebook live I remember with my first Facebook live Mm -hmm. I tell my clients this because often they'll go oh you're so confident you know and yes I used to do public speaking and on really serious subjects and you know Mm -hmm. for social services or telling people that are going to be made redundant that does not make you you know popular those are kind of heavy things to do so there was I had trauma about public Mm -hmm. speaking from from my experience (laughs) with social services and I, I remember coming on and doing my first Facebook Live and I actually turned it off because I forgot what I was going to say. And, and I was just like, oh, it's buffering. Nobody was there anyway, so it didn't really matter. But I was like, oh, my word. Yes. <laughs> so I always share that with my clients because I'm like, you know, we're all on a journey. And mm-hmm. as you've said, it doesn't necessarily mean that fear isn't saying it's not in alignment for you. That's a sign of you expanding your your. Yes consciousness and your identity like if your identity is 
I'm a rubbish public speaker, then of course you're going to feel trauma about doing a Facebook Live. But if you change your identity around that and think, actually, do you know what? I want to be a confident speaker. Can I have fun doing this? Mm -hmm. Then, you know, you can play with it and go, do you know what? I do like doing them, but I prefer writing and kind of being in my cocoon and and, and writing a book or whatever. So you get to experiment. (laughs) Then it's a conscious choice you can really make. But before you're just... um acting from default as you were saying but if you've experienced it for yourself and you really kind of shoveled some freedom for you so that you actually can choose okay do I want to keep on doing this or do I write or do I want to do this or whatever but before it's just an avoidance of of something (laughs) of some kind of expansion (laughs) or pain coming up and I feel like the more we are really allowing us to do this and take the the pre like the fear away or the the kind of condemnment of being afraid to make mistakes or to mm. fail is too is the wrong way the more we like really allow ourselves to to fail or to to shut it back down again or however it plays out to just not be perfect but just exactly. be on this expanding journey the more freedom you gain in your everyday life and how you really want to show up and what you want to try and you're not so limited and constricted anymore to as you were saying your old identity who just said i i can't do this uh if someone sees me fail i'm not lovable or whatever it might be so it's so important to really not even on the business side but first of all on your personal sense of freedom in life and and making yourself some room to breathe and be and really explore this totality of life Mm, so true so true because that's it isn't it we we, we don't want to have self-expression just in one area of life we want to be able to have it in across all areas of life and that's that for me is that that alignment in success is being able to have the 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 balance and the harmony so you're not going yes I've got success in my business but I'm doing 20 hour days (laughs) yeah (laughs) and there's no profit but it looks really successful that's not success yeah So aligned success to me is being able to have that fully self-expression in all those different areas of our lives, with our relationships, Mm -hmm. with our personal development, our growth, with being able to, with our spirituality, with our, with our money consciousness, all, all the aspects I think are, that's where we can have that, that true fulfillment. I think one of the big things for, for me, we were talking about it just before we, we um, opened up the the recording was around being able to, for me being able to have the time to be with my mum in her elder years yes that is a line success for me I just had no time to go and you know see her as much as I wanted to see her when I was working full-time mm-hmm. in, in in the corporate world and then of course when I created recreated the hamster wheel in the entrepreneur world in the earlier days but it was when I was mastering the energetics and changing my identity and then growing the business to the space is now that I have I have that gift to be able to do that and that Mm -hmm. is like I feel so fully self-expressed in that area of my life it's just such a such a gift yes it really is yeah and I think we can touch on because you said okay first of all it's important to know your values in a sense to really find out okay what gives me this sense of fulfillment what is important Mm. for me how do I value my priorities like what what really is my unique set of values that really brings me through life in a way that's like when I look back on my life I'm going to be saying wow what an amazing experience and I won't be filled with regret so I feel like this is one extremely important step the the values and as you just were touching on finding out your why with this mm-hmm. value so okay is it for your kids is it for your health do you want to re- be the best at something like will you best musician or whatever like what will it be for you what will be your driving force that will also get you through the hard trials and <laughs> yeah yes so true it is it is your why that keeps you going but it's yeah. that to have that perseverance um i think that's that's a key thing cuz with the social media you can see all these people having great great success you don't truly know what's going on behind the doors or the work that they've taken to get there or the expertise and the skills that they've developed before who's helping them behind the scenes yes. and then of course the conscious mind can create all these <laughs> illusions again about what that then means and i think it's really important to recognize that 
what it takes to grow a successful business. And what I mean by that is where, this is one of my, one of the questions my coach said to me earlier on when I started working with her. And it's one of those, like a brain tattoo <laughs> that has just stayed with me and I share with all my clients as well, is like, where can we require more of ourselves? Mm-hmm. And I love that because it really invites us to come and approach each day from a perspective of how can I require more of myself how can I be better than I was the day before so that we're always growing and expanding and getting better because if we can just so we only compare ourselves to ourselves yes. rather than to anybody else <laughs> but like can I, where can I be like one percent better yeah and one percent happier 1%. yes afterwards. <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> Um, and that feels it's like just those incremental shifts and changes and, and perseverance being able to 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 grow your business to have and create what you want to create and then not, and not judging yourself which I think is easier said than done mm-hmm. often because uh, there's different levels aren't there of, of of that judgment but not judging yourself when things don't pan out as you might have wanted them to but recognizing that that's going to have created some skills that you now have to take into the, the, the next chapter you didn't have before. Yes. <laughs> yes, amazing. And I just want to touch on, because you said changing your identity, so identity and Akashic Records. I know both are a big part of your work and how you like help people become the best version of themselves so they can have this aligned success that is waiting for them while feeling, feeling really aligned and true to their unique purpose. So how do they two come into play? You already mentioned a little bit about changing one's identity. So how can one change their current identity or the, the image they have of it <laughs> into a re- re- resonance with their future self and their dream life? And how do they do the Akashic Records come into play with that? Or how did you like combine those? Yes. So the way I see it is, so with the Akashic Records, I don't know if your audience know about the Akashic Records. The the easiest way to sort of think about that is, you know, we're imprinting into the Akashic Records at every moment in time. It's a bit like spiritual Google. (laughs) So you can tap into the Akashic Records to find out um, information that that is going to support you in relation to your soul's path, um, you know, from past, present and future, future possibilities. And so working with the Akashic Records, the way I perceive it is working at the soul level of consciousness. And then we have our higher level of higher self level of consciousness and our conscious mind and our subconscious. And the way I like to describe it is as we um, connect in with our higher self, that really opens up our tapping into the Akashic Records and we're allowing ourselves to for the higher self to be the sculptor of our reality and the human being self, which is where we are the the sculpture, if that makes sense, just to use yeah. like a, 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 an art analogy there. And being able to bring in the wisdom and the guidance of what we need to be able to allow our human self to mm-hmm. allow the sculpture to evolve means that we are being led by that higher wisdom and for that to then manifest in this reality the bit that we get to do is to so that we've got all levels of our conscious consciousness in alignment and moving in the right direction so it's not like our higher self is going go over here and our identity is saying no I'm you know in this sculpture I'm not very good at public speaking (laughs) Mm -hmm. and the higher self was going well you need to bring that identity in because this is the direction that you know is going to help you is to go and become a really good public speaker and so that's what I mean around being able to work on the different levels of consciousness so we allow our higher self to lead we allow the wisdom and the guidance from the Akashic Records to come through so that we can become our future future self and then the work that we get to do is around changing our identity so that our body will come with us and not put up that resistance yes. um to the direction that we want to go in does that make sense it does it, it totally does it's like mm, expanding your conscious awareness of being this only three-dimensional sculpture of only mm-hmm. being a human and 
uh, oh, I can only work with what is, and that's how it always was, and it does will always be this way, like from this kind of limited point of view, and feeling like mm -hmm. you have to figure it all out, figure it all out on your own, um, versus really realizing yourself as a multidimensional being that's being assisted and loved and guided in any moment, and then really tapping into it and really also consciously use it to create a change to consciously create something that is available for you but you haven't seen yet yes exactly that's exactly it you nailed it <laughs> <laughs> awesome yes 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 I mean I know the Akashic Records already I think that's really beautiful it's just about really opening yourself up and surrendering to what is available to like to a bigger part of you mm. and kind of also <laughs> stop resisting or refusing that you are that love that you are that um, capable that you are that special and kind of fighting for one's own limitations but really yeah as you were saying stepping into that faith stepping into the trust and in the into that place of listening to this higher guidance that is coming through to to really guide you to something that's there for you but you can see it can see it so it's really trusting that something bigger than you which is also you knows it better than little you <laughs> yeah yeah I love that little you yeah <laughs> don't let little you lead <laughs> yes yes lead little you or yeah. your, your higher self is leading little you and you just gotta get on board with it yeah sense. exactly <laughs> <laughs> oh I love it <laughs> it's beautiful I also um I just want to share that with you and also with the audience because I feel like it has been such a game changer for for me in my my life um I've always written poems but I think five years ago when I had what you could call my spiritual awakening um suddenly poems came through that were guidance like it was not Jolene writing oh today I feel like this <laughs> and just a, <laughs> a way of processing but yeah. suddenly it was like wisdom coming through and guiding me in po poet poetic form wow. and I started trusting it because like I didn't know which way to go so I was just following it following it following it and it really like is still leading me to this day and it's really beautiful and one day I just got the message in the form of a of a poem to emerge with my higher self. And mm -hmm. like I, I didn't really know, like, okay, I know my higher self and everything, but but I didn't consciously think of okay, how do I become one with my higher self? It was just kind of a as we were talking about right now, surrendering and and kind of emerging in a sense with this higher aspect and flowing with its magical um kind of flow that it has prepared for me and I as you were saying just have to tune my radio my my disc or as you were um, calling it really catch up with the identity yes yeah absolutely it's it's um so so amazing the work that's happening when we are allowing ourselves to shift consciousness and to surrender to the higher level of consciousness and I think there's it's important to reflect that there's so much that's happening on a on a frequency basis that we can't see or understand yeah. but you you start to see it reflected back to you in your reality mm -hmm. when you've made that those shifts and you've surrendered and you've allowed that integration with your higher self and that mm -hmm recalibration I have a lot of <laughs> clients that will you know after doing some energy work they might like they might go feel a little bit discombobulated I'm like I love that word because it just kind of like I feel like I'm straddling two frequencies and it's yes. like yeah okay let's set the intention just for you to kind of calibrate to the higher frequency with more ease mm -hmm. so that you can you're not feeling discombobulated and like <laughs> what's going on <laughs> so that you're then able to kind of really allow yourself to be in that space of surrendering and trusting and allowing the next level to unfold I think that's just beautiful that you've you're channeling poems it's such a gift <laughs> thank you I I now also turned it in something that's called mirror poems so it, because after I've done it for myself for a few years I got the impulse over and over again like to do it to offer it for others but I wasn't listening at first I wasn't <laughs> listening <laughs> and then I surrendered and I I tried it I made made a kind of trial 
row where I just asked random people on Facebook I've never seen before, like in groups, hey, would you like to have this? Would you like to have this? Following the impulses. And then I did it for someone I've never seen, someone I just have the photo and the, the name. And it really came through. So I knew then, okay, I can do this automatically as well. And so so I now really also, after getting, um, after I've got a lot of feedback, really see it as a gift. Yeah. So I, I can take this now, like, and appreciate it. But before it, it was just something I did. And I feel like that's something that's so important to hear for people because something they're really good at, something that's so special for other people is something that could be so normal for themselves. And then they go around and say like, I don't have a p purpose. I'm not good at anything. Um, I don't know what I want to do. There's nothing I like, it's not pulling me, but it's right in front of you. And then I feel it comes back to what you were saying before this. Okay, first of all, get to know yourself. Who are you? What's important to you? And you will realize, oh, there is something I'm good at. And there is something I can really light the world up with and and then it comes back to your topic like really be in alignment but also be successful yes yes absolutely beautiful <laughs> I, had so, <laughs> I had so many goosebumps uh, so far so I just okay so what what did I want to add on because I feel like we touched on nearly everything I wanted to ask you um would you be um, willing to do a little exercise because I know you do this beautiful exercise with aligning higher self with conscious mind with subconscious mind just something a few minutes very short that could set the viewer up into a beautiful positive direction and help them to step up their energetic game is there something that would be there for you spontaneously I think it would be um inviting the viewer to just take a moment and thinking about where we are at this point of the year to think what is their intention for what they wish to create over these last few weeks and stepping into 2023 and to bring that intention into their mind's eye because energy follows intention so we really want to be intentional and then from that space to take a moment to really increase their life force energy with this intention in their mind so i always say to people so just to take a moment you can just do three th this breathing cycle three times so breathing in for four holding for four and then breathing out for eight and just doing that at your own pace that starts to increase your life force energy and as you're doing that just to bring your awareness to your soul star chakra which is above your head about 18 inches above your head your connection to your higher self you may see it as a blue pearl. And then just setting the intention. So speaking to all levels of your consciousness. That you're letting the wisdom and guidance to come down and through from your higher self. For your highest good. And setting the intention that your higher self, your conscious and your subconscious are all in perfect alignment for your manifestation of your intention. Just breathing in grace and love and breathing out all energies that no longer serve. And then just saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. And the more you do that very simple exercise, the more you're creating the etheric pathways and opening them up for that wisdom to come through more clearly from your higher self down through your crown chakra, down into your body. They can follow those wisdoms. And then from this space, bringing your intention into your mind's eye is to... Live in the energy of this question. I, I call this living this in the energy of the question so that you can allow the wisdom to come through. If you say, just take a moment to ask, how can it be easy? I'm just continuing with that breath.
And then just noticing if any ideas come through. And being okay if they don't, knowing that ideas will come through during the day. Or well, tonight as you're going to sleep, just to silently ask, how can it be easy? <sighs> just breathing in grace and love and breathing out all energy that no longer serves. Ah, oh. a very quick exercise just to open up the connection with the higher self and to activate the intention for the next few weeks and to think about how can it be easy. Thank you. That was so beautiful, and I always love it if if we can give the the audience or the people who are watching this just something to take away, also for a practical start. Yeah, if they haven't experienced energy work before. It can sometimes just seem very out there or like they don't have anything to grasp. So that was so beautiful. And I really love your uh, voice and how 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 much calm you exude while doing those. So I, I definitely see what your clients appreciate in your groundedness. It's so wonderful. And it it makes one feel very, very at ease and safe. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you as well. And I would have one last question if you're down that just, I feel like we haven't touched on enough and that definitely needs to be a part of aligned success because of course it is going for your whys, living after your values, um, being fulfilled in all areas of life, as you were saying, but then the cherry on top is really while making an impact, while doing what you love, also being paid for it. <laughs> and being being able to support yourself support your loved ones and also invest money in the things you believe in and stand for so a lot of people on this spiritual path light workers seekers healers artists whatever it may be they don't have the best um how would you call it the best point of view or the best perception about money there's a lot of resentment often or the feeling of it being bad or not spiritual or making them look like they don't mean it from their heart or something like that. So what advice would you have for them? How could they rewrite their money story or see money in another light, seeing it as energy, seeing it as love? How can you like <laughs> give them a little nudge? Yeah, I, I think I would say if you think money isn't important, please give yourself the gift of seeing how important money is money comes from source and how you do money is how you do life so I love helping people to transform their consciousness through their relationship with money and every successful entrepreneur works on their money story all the time I'm working on my money story all the time as we need to work on all aspects of our consciousness all the time we've got unconscious perspectives on things and so if you're thinking money's not important, that's just your resistance and perspective. And I would wager a bet that, you know, the money isn't where you want it to be. One of the things you can think about, which I think in terms of big, just because to really transform your money consciousness, you need to work on your relationship with your money and your identity in relation to, to money. Um, but if money isn't you know if money's coming in and then it's going out again as quickly as you can you know see it then there can be some self-worth thing issues that are, are, are bubbling up or there's your relationship with responsibility needs to change and that's a particularly one for people as they're growing their businesses and actually how can I hold more money without feeling like ah, I'm gonna like die from you know all the money coming in is to think about how would you like if you were money how would you like to be treated oh. by the business owner? Mm -hmm. That's a really quick one to kind of transform your your kind of way of how you're treating money is like, yeah, if I was money, would I hang around or would I be like, <laughs> I'm off out of here. No one's paying any attention to me. You don't even get a cup of tea over here. <laughs> I'm going to go over there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um. So I would really invite 
if you've got any resistance to developing your money consciousness, follow the resistance and develop your money consciousness because then you can get out there and make a bigger impact in the world and meet more clients and 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 uh, really to help elevate the consciousness of the planet. This is what's come through from the Cash It Records is one of my, my purposes is to help people to transform their money consciousness mm. so that they can make a bigger impact yes. with their businesses. Money is the default, the byproduct of the impact that they've made when they yeah. are allowing themselves to feel fulfilled, allowing themselves to be able to allow the money in so they can have the energy and they feel safe in their bodies and their bills are paid and they're enjoying having more choices and all the things. It makes a lot of sense and it also shows like how much there is behind it. It's not just money. It's It has so much to do with how worthy you feel, how much you allow your own safety and receiving and mm -hmm. really being here and so much that you just touched upon. So it really is something that's really worth looking at and if people need help with that as you just said it's something you are one of the things you're here to do so they can always contact you and work with you would you like at this point to share with the audience how they could get in touch with you if they would like to yeah absolutely that do come and find me i have a youtube channel as well louisa Hayward, which you, we've just got going um and then my website is um .com. Awesome. It will also be uh, linked in the description box. So you can just click on it as well. All right. It was such an honor, a pleasure and an enjoyable conversation with you, Louisa. Thank you so much for your time. And maybe we can do this again one day. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much. That was a real honor, a real treat to have a chat with you. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day. And to the audience as well, have a beautiful day and see you next time.